Here we have a design and evaluation example and we're asked to design two versions of the interface circuit shown here and here that delivers 5 volts to V2 to the 200 ohm load. Then we're asked to evaluate the two designs in terms of power loss in the interface circuit. Now let's take a look if the 15 volt source here in series with this 500 ohm is connected directly to, to the 200 ohm load. So we see that V2 using voltage divider is equal to 200 all over 50 plus 200 and that gives us 12 volts. What this says to us is that the interface is required to reduce this voltage to the prescribed level of 5 volts. Here we have two figures as discussed earlier where we have interface circuits, one that is series and the others in parallel at the interface circuit. In either case, here the series case implies that I1 must equal I2 and in this case that's equal to 0 0.025 amps. And this calculation is a result of taking the 5 volts and dividing it by the 200 ohm resistor using Ohm's law. In other words, using Ohm's law, 5 volts divided by 200 is equal to 0 0.025 amps. So let's look at the first interface design dealing with R1. Well, we'll start off with a KVL using this loop here. So KVL for the first design is minus 15 voltage drop across 500 and R1 as well as the 200 but we know that the voltage drop across the 200 ohm is 5 volts. So therefore we have an I1 and equals I2 so we have 0 0.025 times 500 plus R1 plus 5 is equal to 0. Now we saw for R1, R1 is then equal to 10 divided by 0 0.025 minus 50 is equal to 350 ohms. Now let's look at the second design involving R2. So we're going to use KCL here. The incoming current is I1. The outgoing current is going through R2 which is just simply V2 divided by R2 and I2. Okay, the current through I1 we have 15 volts at one side of the 500 ohm and 5 volts at the other side. So that's 15 minus 5 is the voltage across the 500 ohm resistor. V2 we were given as 5. R2 is what we're trying to find and I2, what we want, since this is 5 volts divided by 200 that we saw earlier, it's 0 0.025. Now we solve for R2 and we have 5 volts divided by 0 0.2, that's due to this term here, minus 0.025 is equal to 28.57 ohms. You can see that the resistor R2 is much smaller than the resistor R1. So what we have are two alternative designs, both of which will deliver five volts or V2 across the 200 ohm load. However, in practice, 
engineers use additional factors to eva evaluate alternatives that meet the same design goal. In this case, the power dissipation in the interface circuit is an important factor for two reasons. First, less interface dissipation means less power demand on the source. Secondly, less dissipation in the interface resistors means that we have low power ratings which are generally less expensive. So let's look at the power dissipation in the series case for R1 in which we have PD is equal to I squared 2 to R1 which is equal to we know that I2 is 0 0.025 and that R1 is 350 therefore that yields power dissipation of 0 0.219 watts and I'll highlight that and we'll look highlight the resistor R Next, we'll look at the second design, our parallel case, and see what the power dissipation is in R2. Well, in R2, the power dissipation is just V2 squared over R2. For R2, we know V2 is 5, so that's 5 squared and R2 we just calculated to be 28.57 so 5 squared over 28.57 yields 0 0.875 watts and I'll highlight that as well Okay, so in this example we can clearly see that the power dissipation factor strongly favors the series design right here. Okay, so from an engineering and practical perspective, the series design is preferred over this parallel design.